Hi guys, my name is Rosanna Rocha. I am a cosplayer from Tucson, Arizona. I have been cosplaying for about 10 years now. I started my cosplay career by hitting up San Diego Comic Con and boy was that an adventure. Highly recommend San Diego Comic Con at least once in your life just to see what it's like. Anyways, I, uh, I began cosplaying simply as a hobby. I joined a bunch of local charity groups and I went to various events uh, dressed up, you know, for charity work. Uh, we did parades, we went to children's hospitals, we did theme park meet and greets, adoption fairs, uh, luncheons and stuff like that. And it was definitely one of my favorite parts of, you know, my cosplay career, so to speak. It was so different, so rewarding. I loved it. It was a new way for me to meet people that were kind of in the same community as me which was really nice because we would have costume building parties and we would all kind of exchange our knowledge helped me learn a lot of things and you know delve deeper into you know the cosplay community which i definitely don't think i would have gotten as far in this like <laughs> you know in this whole span of cosplaying if it wasn't for being in those cosplay charity groups so I definitely thank them and you know I really think that if you are interested in cosplay which is a common thing you know how do I get started one YouTube is your best friend but two you know also delving into the communities like going to comic cons or joining charity groups you know where you can do stuff you know on the weekends more frequently than your local comic con which may only be once a year so that's definitely something that I would recommend as far as income, it took a lot of investment for me to get where I was. I spent years building costumes to shoot photos of and build a portfolio up so that I could appeal to more people. Um, I don't think I started making income from cosplay until about 2013. So that was definitely a long-term investment as far as, you know, making costumes frequently, shooting them as much as I can, also going to Comic-Cons on my own dime without any help just to meet people just to get my name out there and I feel like it worked because I can go to comic cons all over the country and people be like oh my gosh I know who you are and I say that in the humblest <laughs> manner because I'm so appreciative of you know the internet which could be you know our enemies at times but definitely helps circulate so took me a while to make an income and then after that you know year after year I just started traveling as heavily as I could uh, touring the country back to back to back you know comic cons sometimes I'd be gone for three months at a time that's pretty much how I stumbled into this and I wouldn't change a single minute of it I love I love cosplaying I love when something comes to fruition the way I want it to it is you know it's just so exciting and I will never you know, take for granted this time in my life. So, yeah. Now, the main purpose of this stream is to give you guys some more in-depth and behind the scenes look at my costume, um, how I made it, what it was made of, and the behind the scenes of the shoot. So, here it is. This is the photo room before we build the platform. Um, I'm facing my Lady Death off the sideshow statue, so she is basically standing on this like mound of rocks and skulls and stuff, so um, this is kind of a poor picture. So we're trying to build the mound right now. Oh, those are big. We got some organic looking moss. The trick is to make it look na <laughs> natural, even though it's unnatural. I don't know, put a rock in there somewhere. And then we're going to kind of cover it with this moss stuff to like add to it. I think that looks good. Do you think we need more moss? We could get some if we want to like cover like the backish area. Well, I'm going to be standing there, so. I think that's fine. Just cover it with some moss. Yeah. Here, grab the green one right there. Let me see the moth. Let me see the front of the moth. This is scary. 
Spanish moss. Okay, we got Whatever Spanish moss. This stuff is sheep moss. Sheep moss. So, yeah. <laughs> that looks pretty good. The sheep moss looks good. I wouldn't open that one. I don't really feel like we need to open them both. Like, there's probably only one pack each. Yeah, it looks like there's going to be enough for just one bag. Yeah. Yeah, I wanted to make sure we got enough. Yeah. I don't think we need more than one bag of each, though. Uh, you should probably try to cover this black in the front. Well, she's kind of like on a mound, so that's kind of like... Preserved sheet moss. Sheet moss. So honestly, in my opinion... Video. In my opinion, um, I think the hardest, the, cha the biggest challenge with doing photo shoots is probably coming up with a backdrop or a location or whatever, like building stuff like this, like, because you get, you run out of ideas and you don't want to just do studio, like, normal studio shots. You always want to do something extra, and I think that's honestly coming up with locations where we're comfortable enough to shoot outdoors. Um, you know, or you have to go through the extra work of like building stuff, like building backdrops and, you know, sceneries and stuff. If you don't go outside and you're in a studio, like trying to come up with it yourself. And I feel like that's definitely one of the hard, but do you think that's one of the hardest parts maybe? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Cause we're always trying to brainstorm like, where can we shoot this? Where can we shoot this? She's kind of in a city. She's kind of, you know. Or she's in the woods, which we're in Tucson, Arizona. There's no, there's not a lot of trees. If we want trees, we gotta drive an hour away. So, I, and I just get like my brain just gets fried trying to think of. I think that looks really good, though. Yeah. Yeah, this is like, turning, turning out good. It does, but it's like, I mean, doing I do probably about four shoots a month, and to do something like this extensive four times is impossible. So it's like. A lot of times it's easier to just go outside and shoot because not only is the lighting really good, but, you know, everything is around you is already there. But, I mean, one, it's kind of odd to be in a costume and go shoot outside. People are always staring at you and, like, taking pictures. And, I mean, it's just very complicated to just go outside sometimes even though it's easier. Or, but otherwise you're stuck shooting indoors like this. And you got to build stuff, and this looks really cool, though. I think it's coming out really good. So, what's your one of your favorite, one of the most favorite scenes we've ever done, James? Favorite scenes we've ever done. You know the. Uh, you can think. I know. I can't think. I can't think today. There's so many. There was a. I actually like that, like wash area that we go to sometimes. It's like underneath Speedway. The one where you um, where you wrote. Oh, I just wondered how. We, okay, yeah. So there's like a wash that almost looks kind of jungly, which is almost it's by this horse ranch and stuff. But it, it just looks different. Yeah, I, I do like that. And there's some interest, one too. interesting, interesting, interesting trees. Okay, how does that look? That looks pretty good. Wow. That looks really good. Okay, that, what are we doing for the backdrop? The backdrop is just gray, so okay. based off of, like, it's just a plain, like, we'll probably add some, like, gel lighting, which, can you explain what gel lighting is? Because I have no idea. It's like a, so normally you have a flash that can, like, project light, right? Um, this is where you put, like, a kind of a transparent coloring onto it. Uh-huh. Like, you see those things uh, at, like, you go to, like, a theater. Yeah. There's multicolored lights up there. Oh, it's yeah. Kind of a big gel thing in front of the light. Oh, all right. It colors it intensely. It can, like, add color and stuff like that. Yeah, so, so we use it, like, as, like, a background color. Yeah. Okay. So. Well, good. Yeah. Well, all the props are set. Yeah, the scenery is pretty good. So I'm going to get ready now. Okay. We'll all right. end this session. Okay. So this is me before the shoot, pre-dressed up. Um, I have 
my wig here, front lace. Uh, this is the part that I will cut and I will glue it along my head. Just kind of keeps it in place. This was styled uh, to get the Lady Death, you know, the voluptuous bangs that we want wanted. So it was a definitely a styled wig. The curls were already there. It was more or less the front that needed to be altered and stuff like that. So here's my costume in a bag. <laughs> and then I actually got some really cool props. Um, let's see here. Some black sheets. We're going to do a window shoot. And then also this is because in the, one of the... One of the versions of the statue, she's holding a hourglass, so I'm going to be holding the hourglass in one hand, and then over here I built this is my scythe. Whoops, as long as I don't break it. Um, it's about six feet, but um, we might have to cut it down. But this is the scythe um, that I had my friend 3D print the pieces of the scythe, my friend Ashley. She has a nice 3D printer, so sometimes I have her print stuff. But, yeah, this is a the scythe. Her blade was very distinct um, with this back piece. And, like, yeah, this, like it wasn't just a normal scythe shape. So I had her, like, design it, custom design it. So thank you, Ashley. And painted it and everything and attached it and add the gold. But, yeah, so hopefully it all comes together. I'm about to get ready. Turned out okay? Yeah. All right. Everything's in order? Yeah, I think this will work. I'm going to grab one. the studio. She's preparing for the shoot. Preliminary costume adjustments. Camera and lighting is good. We're moving in. Okay. And narrow the beam so it was a little bit less spread. Are you going to put that on now or? Yeah, I'm going to try and see what it looks like. See if you get a better effect. Yeah. Just so it doesn't spill out onto the background as much. Okay. We're still getting the set ready. Okay, I guess uh, getting the light perfect is uh, one of the skills of the job, right? Yeah, it's like a, there's so many different ways to, to shoot, and so many ways, and I, using light is almost like painting in a way. Because uh -huh. you're kind of 
strategically trying to, you know, light the subject in a perfect way for a perfect angle, kind of create a different mood. So there's a lot of different ways to do it. Excellent. Okay, looks like he's got that set. You gonna take a practice uh, photo? kind of more spread out mm -hmm. and then when you add the grid kind of really narrows it down cool is a smaller area so it should be good okay we're good to go so far so good okay all we need is the model should be right there stand by standing by product this is my costume and I wanted to talk to you guys today about a lesson a life lesson that I have learned in life I'm gonna take you back to high school which was a while ago for me I was in cooking class we made macaroni and cheese that day and something that I will forever remember for the rest of my life is an incident incident that happened in cooking class we only have 50 minutes to make macaroni and cheese. And so it was a very rushed process and everybody was scrambling near the end. Um, the bell went off and one of the boys who was obviously rushing, he had his boat, like those paper boats that were so janky that they gave you in high school with food. There was a boat with macaroni and cheese in it and he like, he, like got up too quickly from his desk and his boat fell and his macaroni and cheese went everywhere. And he had dropped his text mugs. I think he tripped or something. I didn't really see the whole thing, but I just remember this happening. The macaroni cheese fell all over his textbooks, fell all over the floor, not salvageable in the least. And I remember him grabbing his backpack and slamming it on the ground. It's fine. Very upset. You know, it was probably embarrassing, but I just remember Mr. Gillespie, our teacher, walking over to him, and his name was Clay, and he just puts his hand on his hips and he goes, now Clay. Sometimes in life, things like this just happen. So, that was something I resonated with. I resonate with that line all the time. It's just something that's just definitive in my mind, and it's a life lesson that I keep with me, that sometimes in life, things like this just happen. Now, this morning, I was trying to check on my contacts, because, you know, Lady Death, if you guys don't know, she has the whiteout eyes, and I had the whiteout contacts, and I was checking on them, but one of them had kind of dried out, and now, pro tip, Always check on your costume contacts as a cosplayer because for some reason those little dishes that the costume contacts come in, they don't keep the contacts moist. I don't know what it is, but one of them had dried out and I tried to bring it back to life. It was kind of stuck to the wall. Probably dangerous to put in my eye anyways, but anyways, moral of the story is it ripped. I don't have my contacts for my costume, which were a very important part of the Lady Death, you know, aesthetic, but you know, sometimes in life things like this just happen. Life's not perfect, doesn't have to be perfect. Don't beat yourself up if your cosplay isn't perfect. Luckily, this is just a photo shoot and some of the stuff that, you know, like my costume, costume contacts that are ripped now and I need to replace. They'll be able to be fixed in Photoshop. The photos are still gonna come out amazing and I'm very excited about it, so just, you know, I, in the beginning of my cosplay career, I, I always beat myself up if I forgot something, you know, because you're always going to forget at least one thing on a trip to Comic-Con, you know, but definitely just try to take it in. I think my costume looks pretty good. It all came together just the way I wanted it, and, you know, the contacts would probably have hurt my eyes anyways, and I wouldn't have been able to see, so I might have staked myself. So in the end, it's all going to work out. And James is just going to fix them in Photoshop. Go, James. So we're going to get started now. Thank you for listening to my TED Talk. <laughs> this looks like. I'm trying to find. Hold on. Oh, God. Stepping on my cake. There it is. 
<laughs> this is the awesome platform we built. Just continue. All right, let's put on some music. I'm gonna put on some background music on my phone. Okay. Everybody needs some good vibes. Yeah, I'm gonna move that uh, step stool out of the way, so I'm gonna cut the video now. What do you need? We need to look at the photo of the statue. Okay. Here, I can do it online. Okay, so she has it. This is the photo that we're trying to recreate. So it looks like she has the scythe in her left hand and then that hourglass. I try not to kill myself. I feel like this, this is a little bit in the way. I need Can to, you move I forward? Need, I need to put my leg like this, yeah. Like this. Alright, that looks good. Yeah. I like that. And then her side goes. in between her legs. And then the hourglass is in her hand. Okay, we're getting the position right. It's like facing that way, right? Is it? Yeah. I need the uh, hourglass. Okay. Where's the hourglass? It's right behind you. Yes. We're trying to get the position and the lighting right. James is a professional. Okay. Keep this on the guy. It's always the hardest trying to nail a shot that's a recreation of another image. So right now we're trying to recreate the statue and once once we nail that shot, then it's open-ended and I can just start posing however I want and I won't be as stiff because I'm not trying to like, I'll be more fluid, but which is a lot easier to do, mm. pose on my own as opposed to trying to pose, you know, to mock a statue. All right, let's try it again. How's it coming? It's looking good. All right, ready? Count one, two, three. We'll do come more. One, two, three, and one, two, three. Let's see it. Ignore this big thing in the in the way. Can you see it on my legs? Yeah. Do you have a photo? How was the lighting on that? Ah! Oh, oh how was that? I think this rock right here is not gonna work. I recorded that. <laughs> the oh has my God. Hazards of the job. This rock? Yeah, yeah. This is my, I need to put my foot like more up there like that. Okay, here we go. Can you get up there? Hopefully. Hold on. Okay. Got it? Yes. Almost died. It's okay. We almost, we're almost good. died. It's okay. It's going to be fun. Okay, let's try
All right, let's get on the count of three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then devious. One, two, three. Okay. Okay, looks like they still haven't nailed the first shot, so we're still at it. All right. Okay, we got here. Three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And one, two, three. Okay, yeah. they'll take another look and see if we nailed it on that one. Okay, they're gonna change it up. Looks like they got the shots she wanted. We got the shot. leans forward, I think. Okay. Got it? This is part of the shoot where we start, like I said, I'm a free willy and I just start posing however which way and James kind of moves around and adjusts to me, but there's no set pose or anything, so it's kind of a lot easier. I like to use props because then I have something to do with my hands. It definitely adds to it as well. And one, two, three, and one, two, three. Right, right here. Go one, two, three, and one, two, three. One, two, three, and one, two, three. Very cool, very cool. All right, go right here. We'll go one, two, three, and one, two, three. Very cool, very cool. Okay, we're going to go alluring aesthetically her attitude is just so fierce that I was also very intimidated as a cosplayer even as a veteran cosplayer you know some characters they're just so esteemed especially in the comic you know comic book world Lady Death is just in a league of her own and I was actually very intimidated to cosplay her I knew I wanted to do it right I wanted to do her as perfectly as I possibly could I wanted to make sure I spent the proper amount of time creating this cosplay, creating, you know, all the aspects of the cosplay as far as, you know, where we shot, like the area we shot in and, you know, making sure we had enough time allotted to edit the photos properly and make them look perfecto. I just, I always, you know, I figured one day, you know, my time would come and I would be confident enough to in my skill and you know as an artist as a model to do her right and you know I feel like now is the time and it just worked out because I'm here today talking to you guys thanks for you know being a part of Crucial Con thanks for being a part of my you know stream I, I appreciate it so much I you know I met Brian back in it had to have been 2012, 2011. One of, you know, the Tucson Comic Con. I, you know, I knew Lady Death. I actually cosplayed Purgatory in 2012. It was a fun surprise. Me and my friend, you know, she was lined up to be the Lady Death cosplayer, uh, the official cosplayer for that year. And I was like, I'm going to do Purgatory. And I just showed up. It was so great. And I, you know, I felt like I look back on those photos and I'm just, you know, I see the change in, you know, my skill from then to now. And, you know, even though I was proud of my purgatory, I feel like my lady death, it just came out 
I'm very happy with it. <laughs> in the in the in the simplest form of you know me complimenting myself, I'm very happy with it. I have gotten a really great response, so thank you guys. And you know, I just I wanted to make you know Lady Death the Lady Death fandom proud. So I hope I did that. Hey guys, so I figured I would kind of give you a in-depth video of my costume get a little bit closer up close and personal with it um so let's talk here i had me like two major props and this was a hourglass i got it from a home goods my friend actually got it from me as a birthday gift. I told her, I was like, I need a cool hourglass for this shoot. And she found this for me for my birthday. So, but I think she got it at home cuts. Anyways. Yeah. Just purchased that. And really quickly, here's a little up close of the scythe. So the blade was 3d printed and it was actually five pieces. You can kind of see the seam right there. Um, yeah, it was actually split into five pieces and then glued together and then sanded and everything. So, and then I painted it this metallic silver to kind of give it that, sh that blade look. So yeah, this was 3d printed and it was 3d printed with a hole right here, which the hole was too small. So I had to actually whittle, which this is the six foot rod, wooden rod I got from Home Depot. It's only like five bucks and I painted it obviously because it would look like the color of wood painted it but I had to whittle the top down kind of like to a point so that I could get it to fit into this area which I glued it this is just clay like sculpty um, she had some weird gold rings like accents at the top so I made those and stuck those on there and glued them so that was the scythe yeah that was actually a lot more work than the hourglass, obviously. But yeah, so as far as the 3D printing, sanding anything that's 3D printed is extremely difficult just because you can kind of see right here that uh, texture that comes out of anything that's 3D printed. So, yep. But I mean, it was well worth it. I think it looks good. It follows the 10 foot rule, right? The 10 foot rule in cosplay is if it looks good from 10 feet away, then you're good. So also these little skulls, so Lady Death has skull accents all over her costume. You can see, you know, some of the main ones is this piece right here on the bottoms, um, the piece right here on the top, the piece on her cloak. But yeah, there's just like little accents uh, everywhere. There's actually really tiny little earrings too, but uh, you can't even see them in the photos. <laughs> That's kind of unfortunate because my wig takes up everything. So anyways, let's see here. So these were, you know, when you 3d print, most of the time it's like, depending on the, like the, I guess it's the thread they use. It can be either white or gray. In this case, everything was gray, like a flat gray, like this, it wasn't this gray. This is paint, but flat gray. So you have to prime everything of course, and then paint it. So I painted everything gold because her skulls are gold. Um, yeah, so these all turned out pretty good. Figuring out the measurements of each was kind of interesting. Like these ones I based off like how thick the straps were. This one was just kind of a guess. This one was how thick this was, this band. This one was also kind of a guess. I wanted it to be bigger than the top piece, but smaller than this. So, and these are the leg pieces um, that were glued on. So... Yep. So this is, as you can tell, the bottoms with the garter straps. Uh, you can't really see the back garter strap in the pictures uh, because of the cloak, which, you know, makes sense. But yeah, this was the front and it actually has a little snap. The snap connects. So there's snaps. These are the, I guess the, what would you call them? The thigh highs. There's snaps on these as well on the front and the back for the garters you can kind of see boop so that's where these would connect anyways so material wise this is kind of like a stretch leatherette you can kind of see it um 
faux leather, stretched leatherette. They call it leatherette on the internet. Uh, but yeah, so stretched leather, that's all of this stuff was that. And then the cloak, because I wanted it to be kind of shiny and lightweight. Um, I don't know what that is on my finger. That's like a lycra, which is just another, like a stretchy material lycra and then the red is actually I don't know if you can tell it's a little less shiny this is a satin so it helped keep it like lightweight and airy because you know it's hanging on my neck so we didn't want it to be too heavy um this leather material doesn't flow as well it's very stiff so yep so all of these um they're actually like snap button rivet looking things um I feel like rivets like like costume rivets really add to every costume if you can throw those babies on your costumes to make them like just have that like little accent it like it really does bring them out and make them look more detailed just a lot better so anyways so these are initially these are her shoes but uh cosplay tip you know, not everyone wants to buy a new pair of boots or a new pair of shoes every time they do a costume. So, you know, you make just like these kind of like leg coverings, like they're almost like high socks. So that's what this is. And then with the shape where it's, she has it higher in the front and then goes down in the back. So it almost looks like a sock. And that's this one too, left and right. This is my glove. Very simple. Um, this goes on the middle finger to keep it in place so yeah the leatherette is not as stretchy as like lycra which was kind of cool because it definitely stayed in place much better so and then these are the bottoms and then again the top and then the cloak which is sealed by a stronger snap button just because uh this was a little bit heavier so that would seal like that yep so that's pretty much it um all the details of the costume you know all the seams and stuff like that so I was really happy with how everything turned out here's the wig I already kind of went to detail about the wig but also I didn't say in the video it's an Arda wig so Arda is pretty sure they're in Canada. I'm not quite sure. I know they have a Canada site though. And they also have, you know, one in the United States, but they definitely have really good quality wigs. Like they're always super thick and well-made. They are a little bit on the pricier side, like this wig alone, because it was front laced. I think it was like 112 and because of the length. So yeah, that does, I, I don't, I don't even think that included shipping. So, but yeah, it definitely can add up pretty quick um, as far as wigs and stuff. That's why you save money on the shoes. So, you know, you just put this on your foot and then I wore black heels over it. So, you know, it doesn't really make that much of a difference. So, yeah, Art of Wigs, highly recommend. You can kind of see, like, the height of the bangs here. So, that's pretty much all the background and up close details of my costume. I really appreciate you guys listening in on this. <laughs> Hope I'm kind of uh, addressing all the points that you guys wanted to see in the behind the scenes of this. So, yep, that's the costume. Probably cost me, let me, if I do a price breakdown, because I, I did pay my friend to print the the skulls and stuff for me, but the paint, but the material stretchy fabric is actually really expensive so I mean and this wig was also pretty pricey so I I can't really trying to add it up in my head it was definitely at least 400 um just because everything starts to add up like the little tiny rivets add up and like you know all the stuff adds up like you know the clay adds up like the scythe alone cost probably let's think here over a hundred to make this which you think you know I'm sure I could have shopped around a little bit probably could have gotten clay cheaper online versus at Joann's but you know sometimes it's just easier to run down the street and grab something than waiting for it online so 
Yep, that's the costume. So that was an extensive look at my Lady Death cosplay and photo shoot. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it kind of um, gave you some insight as to the whole process of, you know, kind of the photo shoot and everything. It, in reality, it is such a big task to do this. Um, just like creating a comic book where you have, you know, the pencils, the inks, the colors, the writer, everything. It, it's a process, just like you know, you saw the photo shoot, but a photo shoot alone can last up to three hours. Getting ready before that can last a few hours. Uh, putting on a costume, making sure everything is kosher. And then after that, which is my opinion, the worst part, editing the photos, oof, terrible. But um, yeah, that can take days. So, you know, and that is not even, a, you know, touching on going into how much time it takes to make a costume so like the making the creation of the costume itself it, it is a lot so i hope that you know this kind of you know i hope you at least learned one thing today so at the end of the panel i usually have you know a moment and i ask people do you guys have any questions so i got some questions sent in from patrons from fans from friends uh just a couple questions to touch on and uh just general stuff before I get into that, though, I wanted to take a moment to say thank you so much to Crucial Con, to Brian, for inviting me here. I appreciate it so much. I wouldn't be here, you know, if, you know, this opportunity wouldn't have um, occurred for me if it wasn't for that. So I hope that you guys enjoyed this stream, and I really, really appreciate it. And if you like my work, please, you know, support me on social media. I would appreciate it so, so much. So, <laughs> I'm going to get into the questions now. Let's see. Um, mental and physical challenges. So, mental challenges, I kind of, I've touched on a lot of this stuff already. Do not be so hard on yourself. As a cosplayer, you know, nothing is perfect. I was really hard on myself in the beginning about getting intimate details down. And, you know, it would almost take away the fun of the cosplay for me. And in my opinion, that is the most important part of this process is to have fun. And, you know, don't beat yourself up over it. Don't compare yourself to others because that just, oh, that just adds so much stress. Just have fun with it. You know, you're a champion in itself and anything you do, you know, you should be proud of because this is not an easy task. Uh, being a cosplayer or cosplaying at all. So mentally, that was something I had to get over. Like, don't compare yourself to others. Don't try to hold yourself too high of a standard because, you know, a lot of these characters are made up. They're fictional, you know, and some of the stuff's not realistic. So just like I don't have pure white eyes to be Lady Death, you know? Like, it's just have fun with it. That is the most important part. Physical challenges... I haven't had too many physical challenges as far as in co the cosplay, like, um, I got really sick for a couple of years, a lot of you may know if you follow me, I got black mold poisoning, and that was the hardest two years of my life, and it just so happened to be during my cosplay career, but I am healthier now, I do not have as many bad days, physically that was the hardest thing for me to overcome, um, I know some people will probably have body issues and stuff like that, again, you know, you got to just find a place where you're happy with yourself and you're confident. So that is the key. Um, that is the key. There is no definition of perfect. So uh, let's see here. Advice for new cosplayers. Number one advice, besides what I already um, mentioned about, you know, delving into the community with comic cons and maybe charity, the internet is your best friend. It is an infinite amount of resource. It, if there is something that you are looking to do and you do not know how, most likely someone has already done it or someone has done something similar to it to the point where you can, you know, learn from them. You know, make lists, research. Before you start, there is so much research, research that needs to be done. Research, make lists, because I can't tell you how many times I had to run back to Joanne's because I forgot something for my Lady Death costume. Even 10 years later, I'm still making this mistake. Make as best of a list as you can so you can just hit that store one time and be done with it. Saves you a lot of money, a lot of time. Uh, like I said, make a list of everything you need. 
also before you make that list research you know the best materials the best way to execute so that you do not waste money because i can't tell you how much how many times i've bought something and it was not the right thing and then i had to buy something else so yes the internet um the outfit creation process i kind of have already gone over that with you uh nothing more to add besides like i said uh be be honest with yourself be you know understand that some things are just not realistic like you know some superheroes are not built like any person on this planet so it's okay to accept that about yourself as far as creating goes just be as organized as you can and definitely allot yourself on the proper amount of time because there's nothing worse than rushing and stressing yourself out in the end um let's see here shoots and cosplays that i had to overcome uh, I'm going to touch on fashion versus function. Costumes are not comfortable, and if you're going to wear it all day to Comic-Con, you want to be comfortable to the point where you enjoy yourself and you have fun. That's definitely, like, something that needs to be a priority, because I can't tell you how many times I went to cons and said, no, this costume is, you know, I'll, I'll get through it. I'll get through this 10 hours. I'll, I'll wear it and I'll get through it. No. It, it takes away the fun, and that's something I touched on. Fun is the most important part of this whole journey so you know even though a costume may look great it might not be functionable for an eight an eight to ten hour day maybe you can push through a photo shoot for a couple hours and you know in that retrospect just use those photos to show off your costume nobody's gonna fault for you for not wearing it at a comic-con because anybody that has cosplayed knows how hard it is to wear a costume all day long so um, that's pretty much it. I want to thank you guys for being here. I want to thank my patrons. This would, this costume, this whole entire thing would not have happened if it wasn't for them. So, uh, I hope you guys follow me on social media and, you know, reach out if you have any other questions. So thank you so much again for listening and take care. Have a good day. Bye.